Welcome back to class as promised. Uh, we are starting from where we started in our last class, and here we are starting with the registration of companies for task purpose. Okay, so companies are required to register for task and file their audited accounts as well as task computations, which must include the computation of income tasks and then capital allowances with the Federal Inland Revenue Service within six months. Okay, within uh, six months within six months uh, of their financial statements within six months of their financial let me put it as financial year end so uh, in Nigeria we practice a uh, different type of assessments okay so but the most uh, popular one is the self assessment that is the task law allows taxpayer to assess uh, themselves okay based on what the fees is appropriate okay so on self assessment basis or uh, and uh, or 18 months or 18 months after incorporation or 18 months after incorporation so whichever words whichever comes first whichever comes first okay so a company may file an application for extension of filing tax returns for up to two months at the discretion of the frs at the discretion of the frs so the company must file uh, the following documents the company must file the following documents with the tax authority for the purposes of obtaining uh, the company tax identification number for the purpose of obtaining the company's tax identification number so uh, one you have copy of the uh, certificate of registration that is your CAC document including uh, your memorandum of association okay so we have a copy of the certificate of uh, registration your CAC certificate a uh, copy of the memorandum and <coughs> sorry copy of the memorandum and article of association copy of your memorandum and article of association you have copy of the particulars of return copy of particulars of return of uh, allotments copies of particulars of returns of allotments of shares allotments of shares that's a form CAC 2.5 and then D copy of the particulars copy of the particulars of uh, first directors copy of the particulars of first directors from CAC 2.3 okay so upon registration uh, of a company as a taxpayer so the FRS issue uh, a tax identification number which serves as the company's file number for all federal taxes and future correspondence uh, with the Federal Inland Revenue Service. So um, the company must file, uh, okay, so annually on, a, on an annual basis, the, companies, the company must file with the tax authority. Uh, the company must file with the tax authority. No, as mentioned earlier, their task computation, task computation for the relevant task computation for the relevant year of assessment, task computation for the relevant year of assessment, and then two, the audited financial statements the audited financial statements 
for the respective the definitional statement for the respective uh, period okay and this should be in conformity uh, the definitional statement for the respective period in line or in conformity uh, with the requirements of the international financial reporting uh, standards and then three a duly completed and then signed self self assessment form self assessment form for companies in contacts okay and don't forget that uh since the adoption of the uh of the task promos okay so our uh, task offices no longer collect our uh, physical copies of your task completion and then our uh, written financial statements okay so you'll be going there with the evidence of uh, payments if any okay uh, and as well as the evidence of online filing evidence of online filing and the self uh, the the completed and signed self assessment form okay so uh, we have evidence of the income tax liability either in part or in full okay either in part or in full so uh, in line with the section 8 subsection 1 of the validated task act which says that taxable person shall within six months of the commencement of the uh, value added tax act or within six months of, of the commencement of business of a company whichever is earlier register with the federal land revenue service board for the purposes of uh, tax okay so also section 8 subsection 2 of the validated tax act says without prejudice to the provisions of section 32 of the validated tax act a taxable person who fails or refuses to register with the board within the stipulated time in section uh, 8 subsection 1 of these acts as amended shall be liable to pay uh, as penalty an amount of 50,000 Naira for the first month in which the failure occurs and then 25,000 Naira for each subsequent month in which the failure continues. This uh, is in line with the Finance Act of 2019. Okay, so Finance Act of 2019 amends this section uh, of the Value Added Tax Act. Okay, so though before the Finance Act of 2019, uh, the penalty used to be 10,000 Naira for the first month in which the failure occurs and then 5,000 Naira for each subsequent month in which the failure uh, continues but since the uh, signing of the finance act okay uh, which became uh, effective on 1st february 2020 uh, okay so failure to uh, register for that failure to file that returns uh, okay attracts penalty in the first instance uh, 50,000 Naira and uh, subsequently uh, that is uh, 25,000 Naira for every month uh, we, we of which the failure continues okay so that is registration of companies now uh, any government parastatal agencies or departments are also to read all government agencies parastatals or departments are equally uh, to register okay they are also to register by uh sorry they are also to register with the federal land revenue service for task purposes okay so registration by government ministries departments that's mda's departments okay etc as what as agents of the board as agents of the board do you understand so uh this is in line with section nine this is in line with section nine subsection one 
uh, of the value added tax as okay which says that uh, every government ministry statutory body and other agency of the government shall register as agency agent of the board for the purpose of collection of tax under this act uh, why uh, section why section uh, two okay so this is on registration and then we have section nine subsection two of the validated tax act uh, which says that every contractor transacting business with a government ministry statutory body and other agents of the federal state or local government uh, shall produce evidence of registration shall produce evidence of uh, registration uh, with the board that is evidence of registration with the FIRS okay as a condition for obtaining contracts okay so these are like setting a condition for every uh, for every uh, uh, companies corporate organization uh, you know for every contractor transacting business with the government ministry uh, prostatas agency statutory body states you know of the federal st or states and uh, local government okay so uh, that's that now let's look at registration by non-resident companies okay uh, those non-resident non-resident uh, company have uh, asked to register uh, with the Federal Inland Revenue Service knowing fully that they were not registered under the uh, corporate affairs, they are not registered with the corporate affairs commissions of Nigeria. Okay, so yeah, you see, uh, section 10, section 10, uh, subsection 1 of the uh, Value Added Tax Act of the Value Added Tax Act uh, says a non-resident company that carries on business in Nigeria shall register for the task uh, with the board okay, using the address of the person with whom it has a subsisting contract as its address for purpose uh, for the purpose of correspondence relating to the task for correspondence relating to task uh, why section 10 subsection 2 section 10 subsection 2 of the value added task act okay of the value added task act says a non-resident company shall include the task in its invoice and the person to whom are uh, the goods and the person to whom the goods or services are supplied and persons to whom the goods and services are supplied okay in Nigeria shall remit the persons to whom the uh, goods are supplied to in Nigeria shall remit the uh, the tax in the currency of transaction shall remit the tax in the currency of transaction so uh, note that uh, this section was amended uh, through the finance act of 2020 okay uh, and then it requires non-resident companies that make taxable supply of goods and services uh, to nigeria to register with the frs you know unlike what we used to have where the uh, it is the supplier okay that remit the tax in the currency of transaction okay so now the nrc that is non-resident companies are now charged to register directly uh, for tax purpose with the uh firs so so now they will have they will have what they will be having their tin numbers okay so when they obtain tin and then for all their invoices the thing is expected to appear on all their invoices so so why is the resident that is the uh, resident company uh, shall we told and remit the value added tax to the FRS in the currency of transaction 
the non-resident companies may also appoint local representatives uh, probably consultant, tax consultants to help them with their tax compliance obligation okay so uh, section 10 subsection 5 concludes the session by stating that the FRS may issue a guideline for the purpose of giving effect to the provisions of this section okay presumably such guideline if and when issued will not be an attempt to vary the statutory provisions as such would clearly be ultra tires okay so uh, and um, regarding the section 10 subsection 2 okay so the finance act amends this section and it authorizes the federal Inland revenue service to direct operators in the oil and gas sector to the dots and remit VAT directly to the FRS. Okay, so so this uh, uh, to the FRS has now been uh, repeat. Okay, so the you know before. Uh, the VAT deduction at source that is section 10 subsection uh, 20 which says that the non-resident company shall include the task in its invoice and the person to whom the goods or services are supplied in Nigeria shall remit the task in the currency of a transaction okay so this uh, is for non uh, non-resident company okay so now let's move to type of assessments, types of uh, assessments, you know. So we have, uh, we have more than four types of assessments. Okay, so we have uh, one government assessment two we have the turn over basis we have turn over basis of assessments we have the turn over basis of assessments I also have the best of judgment we have the best of judgments asset assessments we have the best of judgments, otherwise known as BOJ assessments. We have uh, we have the self we have the self assessments, and then we have the dividend. Basis. Okay. We have additional assessments. We have additional assessments. I have dividend basis of uh, assessments. Okay. So uh, under this. So now let's take them one after the other. Under government assessments, it is an assessment raised uh, by the tax authority on taxpayer either on the account submitted or at the discretion of the relevant tax authority, probably through a uh, best of judgment. Okay. So and then let's look at the turnover basis. We see in line with the section 55 of the company income tax as okay. So uh non-resident companies had previously been assessed uh, to tax on the basis of their turnover okay they have previously been assessed on the basis of their uh, uh, turnover okay so instead of what instead of actual profits this is based on the provisions of section uh, 30 it is, it is based on the provisions of section 30 
of CETA which empowers the FRS to assess a company to tasks based on its turnover, where it appears that in a particular year of assessment, it has no accessible profit or accessible profits which are less than might be expected to arise from the trade or business or where the true amount of the accessible profits cannot be ascertained. So three conditions. So is it either, uh, either the company does not have an accessible profit or the accessible profit it has is less than what is expected uh, from that trade or business or where the true amount of the accessible profit uh, cannot be ascertained. So under the FRS guidelines, the non-resident company is then tasked on the higher of actual or deemed profits on the higher of actual or deemed uh, profits invariably the deemed profit produces higher tasks and this is referred to as the turnover or deemed income uh, basis of assessments so in arriving at the task payable by a non-resident uh, company using the turnover basis okay so uh, the practice is uh, or the common practice is 20 percent of the trump of the turnover which is uh, usually treated as the deemed profit which is then taxed at the corporate tax rate you know depending on the category of companies don't forget that the finance act of 2019 uh categorized or classified companies into three we have the small companies uh, with turnover of 25 million and below and uh, the applicable tax rate is zero percent and we have the medium-sized companies, which are companies uh, with turnover of between 100 million and then 25 million naira, and then uh, we are, uh, and the attach rate is at 20 percent. And uh, lastly, we have the large companies, which are companies with turnover of above 100 million naira, and the applicable tax rate is uh, 30 percent. Okay, so this resulting in an effective tax rate of uh six percent four percent okay so this rate has been in operation since 1996 when the then minister of finance on behalf of the federal government of nigeria announced at the 1996 budget press briefing that effective tax rate for nrc will be six percent of turnover uh, so that was what we have until uh, recently when we have when we, when we start having the finance art okay so the finance art of uh, 2020 amends the section 55 of the company's income tax act okay so the section 55 of the company's income tax act are uh, now mandates uh, non-resident companies deriving profits from nigeria okay deriving profit from nigeria uh, to file their actual accounts effectively doing away with deemed profit basis of assessment that the FRS uh, you know normally uh, it lies whenever non-resident companies failed or we are unwilling for whatever reason to submit actual data to Nigerian uh, operations so by virtue of this new section uh, 50 Section 55, subsection 1A of CETA, such NRCs, that is non resident companies, are required to submit with their tax returns a company's full or detailed financial statement and the financial statement of the Nigerian operations. So you submit both the foreign uh, or detailed financial statements and that of its subsidiary or its local operations. Are we together so and this must be attested to by an independent qualified or certified accountant in nigeria the tax computation schedules based on the profit at attributable to its nigerian operations a true and correct statement in writing containing the amount of profits from each and then um, every source in nigeria and then duly completed companies income tax assessment forms okay so just like uh, a resident company okay so non-resident companies are also uh, to file their returns with the listed uh, documents attached to the uh, to a cover letter uh, for submission of the uh, returns okay so uh, now we have uh, let's move to the self-assessment 
now you know i mentioned earlier that in nigeria we are practicing our self assessment we are practicing our self assessment okay so companies in nigeria okay as you all know if you are in employment file their tax returns based on the self assessment system where the taxpayer prepares its annual returns and determines its tax liability you know the reason for this is because they believe uh it is the taxpayer that are in business and they should be able to determine without compromise okay to determine uh the appropriate task to pay that is without biasness okay without being biased okay so uh yes this should be done within six months that is the self-assessment uh, should be done within should be filed within six months after the accounting year end and the company can apply to the frs in writing to pay its income tax in installments to pay its income tax in installments so the maximum number of installments the frs may approve is three okay so evidence of the first installment has to accompany the tax returns filed in order to qualify for the installment uh, payment however all payments have to be made not later than eight months after the financial year end assessments are also to be made on a preceding year basis in fact the finance out of uh 2019 uh, okay so now uh makes it uniform for every company's be it at commencement or cessation okay so basically uh a subsisting company should have uh, five returns on preceding year basis so this finance act of 2019 has eliminated or abolished the uh, issues surrounding uh, uh, overlapping and gapping in the basis period okay in the in, in our basis period so going forward I uh, won't be having issues on uh, I won't be having issues on uh onwards on our, our basis period for uh the preparation of our task returns okay so uh that's that now the advantages one of the advantages of self-assessment is that task payer is entitled to one percent bonus of task payable that is uh for early uh early payments okay for early payments probably within the first two months uh, of the months following uh, the accounting year end okay so one percent for large companies and two percent for medium-sized uh, companies okay so if you can file within the first two or three months after the company's year end so also self-assessment files are exempted from payment of provisional tasks though uh, this has been abolished uh, by the uh, final, through the finance act of 2019 so there's no longer there's nothing like a uh, uh, provisional uh, task any longer so we also have self assessment files uh self assessment fi uh, filers are entitled that is that the taxpayers are entitled or uh, any uh are entitled to or may apply for instrumental payment of the task uh, liability okay so and uh, we move to additional assessments if FIS discovers or is of the opinion that income has not been assessed or has been under assessed or that excessive relief has been given an assessment or an additional assessment can be made and uh, assessment or additional assessment cannot be made later than six years from the end of the year to which it relates to so accept uh, in cases of fraud, willful default or neglect where there is no time limit within which any assessment can be made. So penalty for non-compliance. Failure to, comp uh, to, to comply with the requirements of the company's income tax act on the uh, return filing okay, for uh, company's income tax within six months after the end of the financial year attract a penalty of 25,000 era for the first month and then 5,000 era for each 
of uh, for each of uh, the subsequent months of default. So late penalty or uh, late payment of society attracts a ten percent penalty and interest at the commercial rate and interest at the commercial uh, rates are we together so let's go and break uh, when we come back we shall continue uh, from where we stop thank you